On this case, the doctor has prepared a bridge from tooth number 11 to tooth number 14, and the doctor has requested a Bruxer bridge. Um, I've mentioned before in my lectures that um, the one thing that uh, I still use PFMs for is sometimes for these bridges like this, because a PFM bridge is still stronger than an all ceramic bridge. So let's take a closer look at this case and see if in fact this is a good candidate to be a Bruxer bridge or if this might end up being a PFM bridge. We'll pour this impression and as we take a look at it you can see that we've got some, we'll zoom in a little bit on this cuspid and you can see that we've got some deep margins there, uh, very subgingival margins, uh, not as much on the molar but some real subgingival margins there that are a little difficult uh, to see. We're pretty far down there and as we turn and look at this from the side we've got a lot of tissue where the material is going to have to come up and over that material to be able to get there. So let's take a look at the articulated model and see how this bridge preparation looks. And as we look at this in the molar we've got some limited occlusal reduction here that's going to be a little bit tight there that's right about on the occlusal surface of that right about under uh, a millimeter right about 0.9 millimeters and as it comes when it comes to the bridge really what we're looking for is the connector size see for example if this was a single unit crown we could probably make this work by spotting the opposing tooth for you um, but the thing about the Bruxer material the area where any of these high strength cementable all ceramics have an issue is when we come to a bridge and so we need to have a lot of strength uh, between the abutment tooth and the ponic tooth. In fact we have something you'll see in a second called the rule of 27 because as we come forward here to where the canine is you can see that we don't have very much room between this tissue and the opposing tooth and this is probably where we're going to get into trouble is on the distal of this cuspid and not have enough thickness of material, of Bruxer material here to have a successful bridge. In fact, the only thing that's going to work there is going to be a PFM bridge to have a metal substructure here most likely and we may even need to have a metal occlusal there at the same time. So you can see we're just very limited for space in between the tissue here and the tooth here. We're limited here as well but with a little occlusal reduction or with a little uh, opposing the adjusting tooth we might be able to make that work especially if it was a single unit crown we could probably make it work but let's take a closer look uh, once we've had a chance to scan this and see what everything looks like we've now had a chance to scan the preparations and we've actually designed the bridge you can see the design of the the four unit bridge here and that allows us to make some measurements so for example here between tooth number 13 and tooth number 14 we have a vertical height of 2.85 millimeters now I mentioned before we have something we use in the laboratory called the rule of 27. You're going to see the rule of 27 put into practical use here. And what the rule of 27 is, is you take the height and you square it and then multiply it by the width. So really what we're looking for is the height of the connector between the abutment crown and the pontic. We're going to square that and multiply it by the width, the area between from buccal to lingual, how wide that connector can be. So the way the bridge is designed, we're going to have 2.85 millimeters in terms of vertical height. And if we look at the width at that area, it's going to be 3.77 millimeters. So if I do the math for you in this area, if we square the height and multiply it by the width, we come out with 30.6 millimeters. So that's well outside the rule of 27. The rule of 27 basically says if we have less than 27 millimeters in that measurement then it will not be a successful Bruxer bridge. So this one measurement here between two 13 and 14 is 30.6 millimeters and the bridge will in fact be successful. So let's move up and look between the pontics and you can see we've got a vertical height here of 2.09 millimeters between 12 and 13 and you would expect we would be able to do that because you know we're, there's no preparation here and so we can't under prep that area there are times where the opposing teeth will super erupt though and impinge on this so we have 2.09 millimeters there and then we'll look at the width in between those two teeth and we've got three millimeters as a width so if we take the height of 2.09 millimeters and we square that and multiply it by three we only get 13.1 uh, millimeters so we're well short of the rule of 27 in that area even between those two ponics so we'll take a look at that in just a minute again on the articulated model and then lastly we'll go up between the cuspid and the first ponic and you see we have a height here of 1.68 millimeters 
and then we'll look at that uh, in a buccal lingual direction and we have a width of 2.48 millimeters. So again, if we square that height of that 1.68 millimeters and then multiply it by 2.48 millimeters, we only get uh, seven square millimeters. And as a result, uh, we're way under the rule of 27 here between the cuspid and the first bicuspid. So let's go back to our articulated model now and see if that all makes sense. So as we look back at the articulated model now, you can kind of see that based on this soft tissue right along here, you can see where we just don't have enough room uh, of connector height here to have a successful Bruxer bridge. We'd have to come from the margin up and over the tissue, up and over here, and the space in between here, we just can't make it wide enough to compensate for how short it has to be in a vertical fashion. You'll also remember that the rule of 27 was violated just between the two pontics, which would be right about here on this bridge. And so there's still not enough clearance here because of the slope on this gingiva. So it would violate it here. And again, when we looked at the number here between the second bicuspid and the first molar, we did in fact have enough room. So at least on the distal portion of this bridge between 13 and 14, we could have made a successful Bruxer bridge. But if we were to go ahead and make this bridge, we know pretty clearly that we're going to have a failure of the Bruxer bridge distal uh, to the cuspid right in front of where it connects to the first pontic to that first bicuspid. So for these reasons, we're going to have to call the doctor because of this rule of 27 violation and let him know that really without some soft tissue work being done here, which would probably include reducing the bone to be able to drop this far enough, that this bridge will not be able to be made as a Bruxer bridge and will need to be made as a porcelain fused to metal bridge.